Well, once again, welcoming you all to our English class. This is the English class for class 10, if you are not aware of it. And in the previous classes, we have already done literature, we have also done grammar. And I said that we will be touching all the important points. And so today I've selected the writing section. Writing, when it comes to writing, I know we all are quite comfortable with that. But sometimes we tend to ignore this writing section, though it carries a lot of marks. And so I'm going to tell you a little about the marking system before I go into the topic that I'm going to teach. I'll be using a stick. You don't have to be scared of this. Okay, you need three is writing and for writing alone, there are 20 marks for the writing section. And in these 20 marks, it is further subdivided into notice, email, you also have the advertisement, you have the, in, you have the formal invitation. And you will get, an, especially when it comes to NBSE question papers, you will see that our question number 11 deals with this question. It will carry four marks with not less than 60 words. So that is what you see in question number 11. And question number 12, again, you see another writing that is paragraph writing, which carries another four mark. And there you will be given a lot of inputs. And the next comes the visual input. You will be given some pictures and you have to write a note on that. And when you are given to write a paragraph, I want you to keep this in mind. A paragraph just simply means one paragraph. Please be very careful with this. There are students who make mistake in this question. When the question clearly says or clearly asks you to write a paragraph, you tend to write two, three paragraphs. That is where you have to avoid your mistake. And then one more mistake that the students make. There are some students who have very good writing skills. They have very good writing skills. They write better than their teachers. We have seen that in the evaluation of dance scripts. But they also tend to forget the topic, that is the heading. So when they forget to write the heading, remember students, you are losing one mark there because the title itself carries one mark. And the next question will come, the other writing that you will have is of seven marks, which is the highest mark for our question paper. And in this seven mark, you will be given two options. Two options from letter writing, you have the article writing, you have the speech writing, and also you have the report writing. So I want to start with the question or the topic that carries the highest mark. Every year in question number 14, you will get this question. Either to write a letter or report, or it may be a speech or an article. You will be given two options which I cannot predict and which nobody can predict. And so that is why I have selected the letter writing for today's topic. In a letter writing, see, when we say letter writing, there are two types of write, letter writing in English grammar. Two types of letter writing. You have already covered informal letter writing in class nine. That is the letter that you write to your near and dear ones, the letter that you write to your friends and family members. That is informal letter writing. So in class 10, we do not have that informal letter again. We have the formal letter. And before I start explaining a for, uh, on the format of a letter writing, I'm going to say what kind of letters are formal letter write, writing. And formal letters are the letters that you write to your principal. I'm sure you, you miss classes some days and then you have to write an application to your principal or to the head, to the headmaster maybe. Those, are, those falls under the formal letter writing. And when it comes to writing, it's very important. I'm not saying that the others are not important, but letter writing will be with you all through your life. Even if you want to go for a job application, you want to find a job after your completion of your studies, that also you will need. There are some people who are well-educated, who are well-educated, but they also find it difficult to write their application by themselves. They still run to people to write their application. That is what I don't want you, my dear students, to make this mistake. It will be a laughing stock to some people someday when your degree certificate says that you have this much. And that is where you also need to, to pay attention. Whatever you are learning right now, don't think that it's only for scoring marks in your exam. It's not. Because once you learn this at a young age, it will be difficult. For some of you, you might already be aware or you have the knowledge of writing a letter. But if you are still the person who does not know how to write a formal letter or an application, it would be shameful on our part, on your part, and also we as teachers. 
the, the society will assume that teachers are not teaching you all these techniques. And that's where both the parties, the teachers and the students will be embarrassed. I don't want you to make this mistake. So please take a look at it carefully, even if you know the format. I've selected this because letter writing can be one of the most scoring topic. Of course, we have the speech that also carries the same marks. But even for a person who has a very good writing skill, you may, have, you may possess a very good English, but if you do not follow the format, that's where you will tend to lose your mark. Okay, keeping in mind the scoring, the, the scoring of marks for the exam, I want you to pay a careful attention. If you have your books and copies with you, uh, this topic is from page number 20 and 21. I repeat, page number 20 and 21 of a textbook. And so I want you to be very careful with this. If you have your copies with you, I don't mind you taking down the notes. You don't have to write everything in detail, but you can write the main points so that you will not forget. Sometimes we tend to forget the marking system, even if we know the format very well. And when you see this, you will find it the most scoring topic of all in the writing section. Okay, the first thing that you have to write is sender's address and that date. Sender's address. So who will be the sender here? The sender will obviously be you because you are the one going to write the letter. It's your address. Here you have to write your address and the date very carefully and writing that itself will give you one mark. Just because you are able to write your address and the date carefully, you can score one mark. And when it comes to writing of date, we do not encourage, and the book does not encourage us to use short forms. Example, if you are writing 6th May 2020, we want you to use the word M-A-Y instead of using numbers and make sure that you write it in the full, full form. For me, it's, it's just a three letter word, but for December, example, take the example of December. You have to write three syllables, so you may not want to waste your time writing that, but please do not make that mistake. We recommend you to write the full form. That is for December, you have to write D-E-C-E-M-B-E-R in full, 2020, not just 20, or for 2019 is gone, but for example, 2019, if you want to write that, do not write 19 alone. You have to write the full form. So just because you are able to write this, you will get one mark in your exam. So isn't it easy? It's going to be very easy because I'm, I'm sure every one of you can write your address correctly. But when I say your address, don't just keep the address that you are in right now, maybe your residential address. Please make sure that you follow the question. If the question says, you are so-and-so living in that area, without following the question, you might even tend to forget the question and write your own address that you're residing right now. You become too realistic. But please avoid doing this. Make sure that you are following the question as asked by the question setter. That's what we have to keep in mind. So you already earned one mark. I don't want you to leave this class today without earning seven marks or at the least, you have to score six marks today. I'm going to give you some exercises at the end of our class, so please be prepared and be very careful with this. The next point that you will find is, okay, but before that, after writing your address, please make sure that you leave a space. For us, we mostly use the ruled copies or the ruled papers. So after writing your address, make sure that you leave one line space or even if it is in a plain book, Make sure that you leave some space and then come back with a date. After writing the date comes the receiver's address. Coming to the receiver's address, you don't have to worry about where that person lives, but it has to be his official address. For example, you write an application to your principal, you don't keep struggling to find where he resides because you know that you have to write the principal, government high secondary school, Kohima, or maybe government high secondary school, Mount Town. That is his address that we are talking about here. Sometimes when, we, when I explain the word address, you might even want to find his personal residence. Those things are not needed in a formal letter. Please keep this in your mind. You just have to find the official, his office address. That is what we mean by official address here. And so you can write the receiver's address. And then writing the receiver's address carefully again scored you another one mark. So you already scored two marks here. I'm sure you all know how to address your principal. Or maybe if you, if you are a student of a private run school, if you want to write to the board member, the managing board, so-and-so school, just write like that. Here I want to make a clarification. In, 
if you are asked to write to the director of school education, make sure the director of school education, the directorate office belongs to Nagaland and not to Kohima. It is not a district office. Keep this in your mind. While writing this, if you are writing or if you are addressing to, a, to an office or to a person that is governing the state, please make sure that the word Nagaland comes first. This is a very common mistake that we see in, even in the applications written by very well-educated people. If you are writing to the director, their director, school education, Nagaland, Kohima. That is how you have to go on. Kohima signifies the place where the office is. Don't think that you have to write Kohima first every time or Dimapur or Mon if it is not a district office. If you are writing to the deputy commissioner, DC, for deputy commissioner, you have to write Kohima first because DC, DC governs a particular district or for that matter, any other district, PEG district, let's take it. If you're writing to the DC of PEG, you can write PEG first and then Nagaland later. But when you are writing to an official who governs the whole of the state, make sure that that comes first. I repeat, that director, school education, Nagaland Kohima. That is where you have to pay your attention. And then the next comes the salutation. Salutation, again, salutation and subject will carry one mark again. So here comes three marks. When I say salutation, it refers to the address that you made to that person. Maybe, madam, dear sir, whatever. For business official letters, you can even, there's no harm using a particular name. You can be very personal. Mi Mr. Ambani, if you want to write to Mr. Ambani, you can use his word. If it is a business letter, there is nothing wrong. But later, we will deal with that. Your salutation and the complimentary clause will have to tell you here. I'm not touching the complimentary clause because we have to finish this upper portions first. Salutation can be dear sir or sir, madam, whatever you want to address. And see, I also want to remind you again, you will find a lot of different formats even on the Google. But remember, we are following the NBS e-textbook that is prescribed by our Nagaland board. So whatever is given there to be on the safer side, I'm not going to comment whether those formats are right or wrong. It, it will be acceptable, but we are learning so that even for a purpose that we will write for our exam to score marks. And so if you are learning with the intention of scoring marks, I want you to be very careful in these things. You don't have to Google everything and start following all the formats that you see because that will just create a confusion in your mind. And when you get confused, you did not learn this one well, even the others you did not learn very well, that is going to be a negative point for you. So just follow whatever is given in our textbook because the heads know what is best for us. They are giving out those and they are giving out because they find that that's, that's good for us. I want you to keep this in your mind. Salutation will come first and then the subject. In the olden format of letter writing. So to say, even during my school days, that was, there was a little bit of difference. We write the subject first and then the salutation later. We usually write this, and even to this day, we find students writing the subject first and then the salutation. But according to the format given by the NBSE, we also have to follow this. Always write the salutation, sir, madam, or whatever. You have to write, write that first and then comes the subject. If you are a person who struggles to write the subject, there, we also have seen, and I'm sure some of you struggle to write the subject of a particular letter, of a formal letter. I'm giving you the trick or the idea. It's very easy to, f to find the subject. The, almost all the time, the question, in the question, you will find the subject hidden there. If you look at your question number one of page number 21, you will also find that. Question number one of page number 21, you Okay, write a letter to the mayor of your city, complaining for the pothole rots. Here, the subject is already hidden, uh, hidden here, if you find it. If you look at it carefully, it can just be complaint letter for the pothole rots in our city or in the city. So almost everything, the main points are always hidden in the, sub, in the question. So if you are a person who struggles, I see some students who will struggle to find subject. They will be turning their heads around, looking at their friends' copy just to find the subject. The rest of the letter they can manage, I know. There are, some of you may be very good with your writing skill, but you still struggle to find the subject. 
to write the subject of a letter. If you are that person, just keep in your mind that it will always or almost every time you will find it hidden in your question itself. That's what I want you to remember. If you think that you have to write, I will recommend you writing once again. Take notes so that it's going to help you. I'm not going to wrap anything right now. You can take your time as, and al along with that, you can also keep noting the points that I've written here on the board. And so you already scored three marks here. You still have four more marks to score out of seven. seven. Sometimes you avoid the letter writing because you think it's difficult. But even if you are that person who thinks like that, if you have interest in speech writing, article writing, please do not get me wrong here. You can go for that. I'm not just asking everyone to start writing letter in an exam, even if you have options. Choose, your, choose where you are interested, you can go with that. But I'm saying this because if there is anyone who struggles to score marks in the writing section, I recommend the letter writing because with every point you get an you, you get a mark easily if you know the format. This is how we go about. And next comes the body of the letter. In the body of the letter, you will have the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. In the introduction, you have to state whatever you want to state and make sure that formal letters should be very polite. Even if you are writing for even if you are writing because you are annoyed with the government, maybe you are annoyed with a particular organization, your school, or whatever, that tone cannot be rough. Please keep in mind that the usage of your language should be very polite because that is the way to write a formal letter. You cannot just keep blunting out all the words that you want to say because it has to be in a very, for, in a very formal and polite way. And when I say that, if you, example, we usually start our application with, with due respect and honor. So we, we have to show that we respect that person because he is holding a particular office. And if you do not respect a person, an official who is, hold, who is the head of a particular department or a particular organization, that would be wrong on our part again. Whether we like it or we don't like it, we have to keep in mind that it should always go in a very polite manner. Use the best possible words, but make it simple. You don't have to go searching for complicated words, flipping your dictionary every time. When I say that I recommend dictionaries very much, and I would like to read your dictionary, but just to write an application, you don't have to keep flipping the pages. Make sure that your sentence is very simple. Use simple and understandable words and also polite. That's what I recommend. And in, in the introduction, you have to put out all your points why you want to write. And in the body, you can give some suggestions. And the conclusion can be a request. Sometimes you, you can even write a letter just by giving two paragraphs. That is, the introduction and body comes together, and then the conclusion comes together. And the conclusion, we know we have to write some kind of request. I Therefore, in your normal application that you write, very regularly at school. I therefore request you to kindly grant me leave for the day. That's an example that we usually write. There can be so many different forms. You don't just have to stick to what I'm saying right now. There are so many different forms. You can write the, with the vocabularies that you have in your mind. You can write longer application also. And keeping in mind that it's polite, there's nothing that is going to affect, affect that, okay? And the, in the conclusion, that is the request part. After writing that, remember, you have scored another three marks here. So all together, you have earned six marks. This is how the scoring goes in a letter writing. That is why I'm recommending to go for letter write, formal letter. And plus 10, remember, we have only formal letters. And the next one comes the complimentary clause. As I've said earlier, the salutation and the complimentary clause has to tally with each other. If you have used a personal name, Mr. John, if you have used that, you also have to make sure that you use the word yours sincerely. But if you have used sir or madam, make sure that you use the word yours faithfully. You have to use yours faithfully and then write your name there. Always make sure that you follow the question. Sometimes you tend to write your own name, even if the question suggests that you are another person. You are Nikki, the school president, or maybe the captain of the school. If that is the question, make sure that you follow that. 
Of course, everyone tends to forget. Sometimes we are careless or sometimes we are running out of time. And that is the reason why we tend to write our own names again. And we, I know we all fall in love with our names sometimes. Even if your friends tell you to write your names unknowingly, you tend to write your name again there. And that is the mistake that we make. But you cannot risk the mark here by writing your name, though it's precious. You have to follow what the question says. And following the question will help you a lot. Complimentary clause, as I said, yours faithfully or yours sincerely, you can use anyone depending on how you addressed the person, how, you say, how the salutation was used. This is how it has to go about. And then if the question suggests that you are holding a particular post, maybe the chairman of the colony. So if that is the case, make sure that you do that. And also remember to sign with date. Do not just leave your signature like that. People say, signature without dates are invalid. So I'm sure after, write, after giving a lot of efforts and you, don't, you, you even sign there but you forget to write the date, that is not going to be very nice. So please make sure that you sign above your name and also write the designation that you are holding. This is how it goes about in a letter writing and complimentary clause and subscription alone scored. You can score another one mark. This is how a letter writing should be written. And one very important thing is that everything has to be aligned to the left-hand side of your page. Everything has to be aligned to the left-hand side of your page. And see, sometimes we try to use, we try to give the sender's address here, but you forget to write it to the left-hand side, you shift it to the right-hand side again. Yours faithfully. I've seen some application like that. So if that is the case, make sure that everything is aligned to the left and that is the formal, that is the accepted format of a letter writing. And for even for the paragraph changes, you don't have to move to the right hand side again, leave one line space and then you can continue. This is how we go about in a letter writing. So altogether it scored seven marks. So that is the reason why I'm asking you to go for letter writing if you are a person who struggles with your writing skills. I'm sure this has helped you. I'm going to sum up the letter writing here again. Here, letter, the formal letter. First is sender's address and date. Make sure that you write it carefully. After writing the sender's address, make sure you leave a space and go down, write the date, keeping in mind that you have to write the full form of the month and year. Do not write the short form. And so if you're able to write that, you got one mark. Receiver's address, the person to whom you're writing the letter, write it very carefully. You scored another one mark. Next comes the salutation and subject. When I say this, remember keeping in mind everything has to be aligned to the left. Don't shift your paragraphs here and there. It has to be to the left-hand side of your page. And so salutation and subject. Sir, madam, whatever you want to write there. And then the subject, as I've stated, refer to the question for your subject. And if you are able to write this too carefully, you got another one mark. And then the body of the letter, that is the introduction, body and conclusion, all comes together here. And if you are able to write this, you get three marks. The next comes the complementary clause and the subscription that carries one mark. This is how we go about with the formal letter writing. I'm sure this has helped you. So what I'm going to say today is I want you to give, I want you to write an exercise that is question number one of page number 21 that is going to help you. Please keep it in your mind. Then, and then the next class that we meet, I want, I want you to see whether you have followed that carefully or not. If you have followed it, Today you are leaving this class with seven marks earned and that is for your exam, HSLC 2021. You are already comfortable with seven marks. If you made a mistake here and there, you will, maybe one mark will go away. So six marks guaranteed for the next exam that you are going to write. All the best for that. We will be shifting to another topic now. So we have already learned the format of a formal letter writing. And as I've said, you usually get options in your question paper. That is question number 14. You always have two options to write. And you may also get a speech, a report, an article. So I'm, since I cannot touch all the topics today, I'm going to teach you how you should write a report. You know what is a report writing? Okay. A report writing is usually the write-ups that you find in the newspapers or the magazines. 
There are two types of report writing, formal and informal again. And here, in our case, we have both. We do not know which one will be asked for the question, so I want you to be prepared with both the report writing system. If you want to be a journalist, you will surely be writing reports. There might be a lot of students here sitting in front of me. You are still in class 10, but you have an aim to become a journalist because I'm sure you envy the journalist a lot. Even me, I do that. Even to this day, I wanted to work like a journalist. And those are some things that we envy, some professions. You might have your interest in some particular area. And if you are a person interested in journalism, you also have to know how to write a report. And we have the formal, informal, as I've said, and then the formal report will usually be the reports that you find in the newspapers. Formal reports are the reports written in the newspapers. Informal reports are the ones that you find in the magazines. For example, your school magazine. You, you might, I'm sure you will all have your annual school mag magazine. So in that case, if you are asked to write about an event, you have to write an informal, mag uh, informal report here. First, let's deal with the formal report writing. In the formal report writing, you have to write the headline and make sure the headline is very catchy. Because I'm sure if you find a report which does not have a very catchy heading, an attractive one, you will not like to look at that. Or maybe a very long heading is given and you don't have time. See, when you look at the newspaper, you, every morning the newspaper comes to you, what you do is, I bet I'm right here. You first look at the heading. You look at the heading and if you find any particular interesting topic, you go for it or for the boys, they usually go to the back page, I know that. They go to the back page and because you find the news about sports there, for the girls, they may go to the entertainment page. This is what we have our interest. And even in that page, I'm sure you don't go reading everything that is written in that page. You just try to find the, the report that has the most interesting heading. That is how we go about. So your heading will reflect a lot, a lot on your idea. And so that is why people look for it. If I find a heading which is two sentences long, I'm sure we lose, we lose our interest there. Keeping in mind that your heading has to be very catchy, you can also give some subheadings if you want. You give the main heading, and if you think that that main heading does not explain everything, you can go for a subheading, which will come below the headline. And the byline. Here, the byline means the source or even your name. Staff reporter, Nagaland Post, example. That is the byline. If you are a staff reporter of Nagaland Post or staff reporter, the Hindu. Or you can even personally give your name. Give your name and write staff reporter or your personal name alone also will be enough. That will suffice. And so the byline also plays a very important role here. You have to write the byline carefully, the source from where you got the news. And next comes the deadline. The deadline, you have to write the place and the date of the event. Don't write, if you are writing the report today, it's not necessary that you write today's date. If the incident occurred yesterday, you can write yesterday's incident. That is how we go about in report writing. The deadline. And then here, all these have to go in different lines. Head, heading comes first, and then you cannot just write your by, byline there again. Come below the headline and write the byline. That is your name or the source from where the information is given. Or if that is just a news from the internet and you, you cannot claim what others have already written, that is a punishable offense. So you can even write source internet. That is going to help. And then the dateline. Like I said, the place and date has to be clear. And then you, you can just leave that line and come back. So. In, at the starting of your report, you have to make it very clear on where the incident happened. If you are reporting about an incident, you also have to mention the place, the date, and then the details here, what happened here. If there are any witnesses around, you can also interview them and write the witnesses' comments, making sure that it is quoted. You cannot just write randomly. You have to quote their words and then put it into your report. You can, if there is an accident that took place in a certain area, you can ask them, you can go and interview them, maybe over the phone also. If that is the case, make sure that you write their words quoted, or else you cannot use the direct speech here. If you want to use the direct speech, always go with quotations. That signifies that it's not your word, but it's the word or, or the view of that particular person. 
Report writing is very interesting because there are not much restrictions. You have to use passive voice. Passive voice is always recommended. I'm telling you again, passive voice and past tense is recommended for report writing. So if you keep that in mind, there are no particular rules that you have to be very, uh, you have to be very scared of. You have the freedom to use your writing skills in any way. And for this writing, even for letter and this report or whatever comes under the seven mark category, it has to be a minimum of 200 words. Keep that in your mind. Sometimes 200 words sounds quite heavy for us, but when you really put it into practice, 200 words will not be enough for you to describe an event. And if you are a person with medium handwriting size, one page or one, a little more than one page will make up to 200 words. And that is the reason why once you start writing all this, it becomes easy. When you see the question, write a report on that incident or maybe the Hornbill Festival, and then you are asked to write with a minimum of 200 words, you find it a little burdensome, you find it taxing, but do not keep that in your mind. Just remove it and then you can write with your freedom of expression. You can write anything that you want to write, provided that you use the passive voice. So that is weird. Here, the benefit of report writing is you don't have to follow so many rules once you give the headline, the byline, and the deadline carefully. The rest, you can just go on with your flow of writing. And then the first paragraph will give the idea of what the news is going to, going to be. You have to give a rough idea. You have to present a rough idea here and after you do that, the rest will just come automatically if you are a person who witnessed that. Or even if you have not witnessed that. Since you are a student of class 10, we don't expect you to go around everywhere and know every details of what is happening around you. But when you write for exam, imagine that you are there yourself and then you have seen everything. And so with your imaginations, we, you can write for the exams. This is what sometimes you may feel like you have not been there, so it's difficult for you to write. Please remove that from your mind because we also don't expect you to be going around every time. And so this is where your formal report comes. And then the informal report will be the reports that you write, the writings that you give for your magazines. Imagine that there is a farewell program for the class 10 students in your school, organized by the class 9. That is what we usually do. So it's your farewell function and you as the captain of the school or maybe the secretary of the school is asked to present a, present a report on the farewell function that has, been, that has been celebrated at your school. You have to follow this informal system of writing. And in the informal system of writing, the heading as usual, like the formal report writing, the heading has to be given maybe farewell function celebration or any catchy topic that comes to your mind. I know a lot of you are very imaginative. You are creative in bringing out your write-ups. And so you can bring a very catchy heading and then you can write your name and class here, unlike the previous report. The previous report, your class is not really required or maybe your name is also not compulsory, but if you are writing for your school magazine, you have to write your name and class because it is going to be for the school. And keeping your readers in your mind is very important. If you are writing a report for the primary sections and you use words which they will not understand, or you write something that they are not interested in, your report will not be of much value. But if you keep your readers in your mind, that is going to help. You write, you're writing your name and your class is very important and bring all the factual details. You know what is a fact? Fact means truth. Because you have been there, you have witnessed it, you have to write the factual details very carefully, step by step. It has to be systematic. You cannot just go randomly. And if there is any item that is presented by your class, you can also write that. Or maybe you call somebody to be the speaker, the, the resource person. That person spoke something, you can also quote those things, the main points and say, or you can also use the indirect speech and just write in a sentence. That is going to help. And always make sure that you maintain the specific step-by-step -step details of the event, and that is going to help. Factual cannot be changed again. So what you have to know here is keeping the readers in your mind will help. If you're writing for the newspaper and you think that only your friends will be reading the report and that your writing may be a little different, it may not make much sense for the other readers. If it is for the general public, the usage of your words will be a little different. If it is for the school, 
the interest of the readers will be different from the general public, so the topic has to go in that way. So today we have already learned two types of writing that carry seven marks. We still have two topics. We still have two topics that are for that are for question number 14, which carries seven mark. We will do that in the later classes, but I'm sure this has benefited you. And listening once will not help. If you have already listened, put it into practice. Put it into practice and also, I, I'm not going to give any exercise here, but our question number one tells you that you are Azoe, the staff reporter of a local daily, of a newspaper. And, and so, in that case, you can even put into practice. I'm going to be very happy if you do that. But even if you cannot do that, please make sure that you write the first question of your letter writing and review it maybe by your teachers or if you can get into touch with any of your elders that will guide you, that is going to help you a lot. And I'm sure you enjoyed it. Please put these things into practice and I'm going to end my class here for today. Thank you all so much for tuning into this program.